So hi guys, my name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the host of the Sisters on Fire IRL series and the beautiful in motion actress and talented artist is Raquel John. So why don't you safely explain to everyone who are you? How did you become an actress? I know you're an artist as well, I believe. So share your story and then we'll, you know, keep it going. Awesome. So I'm Raquel John and I started acting about eight years ago. It, I, it was kind of an accident. I stumbled into it. I went with my brother to an audition. They, he had long hair. They thought he was a girl. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So my mom was like, no, I have a daughter. And at the time, I was in AP Arts and stuff like that, and I was gearing up for college to go to um, study art. And I was like, no, I'm going to be this mm -hmm. famous painter. I don't want to do this. But she was like, no, just yeah. try it. So I said, you know what? I'll give it a try. She coached me through the role, the sides, for the audition, mm -hmm. and I booked the lead role. And so that no, kind of no. started the, I guess you could say that's when I got bit by the acting bug. Um, yeah. I took the time to study my craft. So I took like two years to study. I didn't do any auditions or anything like that to really see if I wanted to do this. I fell in love with yep. it. And then that's how I kind of went from there with acting. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And what, what do you love about it? Like what, what are the feelings that it invokes inside of you? Do you, you know, does it allow you to be a different person? Like explain that process for people. Yes. For me, it's definitely about becoming different, a different person, um, stepping outside of myself yeah. and getting to step into somebody else's shoes. So I definitely like the creative process that I get to build or take away or, um, even bring in things that aren't me like part of my personality or any quirkiness that I have, I get to look at other people, yep. study people. So it really allows you to get into the mindset of people, their situations, society, understanding this world, yeah. understanding people's social statuses and things like that. So it's kind of like, that's where it's like, yeah. Mm, okay. And what would you say are the hardest challenges that you deal with in your industry? <laughs> well, there's a lot of challenges that come with the industry, but I would say for yeah. me, um, sometimes for me, it's not necessarily seeing the material that I want to portray. And so mm -hmm. that's, mm. I will say the writing, not necessarily writing, but like just certain projects that we don't get to see that are really gems yeah. because maybe they don't have the right funding behind it or anything like that. Um, that's been the most frustrating thing frustrating thing for me is like the material like i'm really busy with that like i really want the yeah. pretty stuff so yeah okay and then how has your narrative been affected being a woman and being a, a person of color it i've learned a lot <laughs> um <laughs> it's, it's been an interesting process um yeah dealing with that because my brother's an actor as well and so seeing it from a male's perspective is definitely different yeah. that I do notice that mm -hmm. they get more respect. Um, and it seems like their, a line of their work becomes a little bit easier, just a little bit more so than yeah. the uh, African-American woman. So, um, so for that, it's like having to make sure you stand your ground and you know what you want to mm -hmm. do and, um, not always saying yes to everything and just having a true sense of self. That's what I've noticed yeah. that helped me stay grounded and rooted going through this mm -hmm. journey. Absolutely. And do you feel there is like a limited amount of opportunities for African-American female actresses? Like, you know how the stereotype of we're angry or we're sassy or we're sexual deviants. Like, are you seeing more change and like more dynamic characters than those same types of people that we keep seeing in the films? Yes, I have over the time. Like, since I first started okay. acting, there definitely has been a, a transition and a change. And it has Good. been, the spectrum has been broadened a, a lot um, to allow us to come in to play, you know, more grounded, rooted characters, which are in everyday people's lives. You know, yep. I even, for me, even with my particular look, it's like, most of the time I get like, what are you? And I'm like, I'm black. And so it's like, we come in different shades. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, we have yeah. different ideas of what we want to be. It's not just one way. So mm. I have seen it widen 
to those spectrums of, you know, giving everybody a chance to be represented. That's cool. Okay. And it's been for me, like since Black Panther and Michael B. Jordan, you know, having his own production company, obviously you've worked with Tyler Perry. It's really been a beautiful experience seeing, you know, Black productions be so successful, but then also seeing us in front of the camera, behind the camera. Are, are you as well interested in producing and directing? And if so, what are types of projects that would be interesting to you? Yes, I'm definitely interested I'm interested in those two things. And writing, I really, um, it's mm. so funny because a lot of people keep telling me to write my own material. Um, I, everyone that I come across, it's just so intimidating just a little bit. And I guess that's yeah, you should yeah. just do it because you're so intimidated by it. But um, Absolutely. For me, I like the real raw drama type of feel to my uh, to the work. Mm -hmm. I like to make people think about society, about life, about themselves, about um, mm. different topics that we tend to like brush over or put a yeah. a certain look upon, and it's not mm -hmm. always looking in that stereotypical way. And so I like to touch on those type of mind bending and mind thought-provoking topics mm. yeah absolutely okay and when it comes to your space and like growing as an actress what are you doing to like you know to be able to be a part of so many successful productions like acrimony and all the other things you've done how did that happen is it you know you do you just have great talent people that work with you do you do a lot of pitching what's that process like oh uh, that's a, it takes oh, that process is so um it takes years to develop um, developing mm -hmm. a good team, but also by okay. uh, you know, taking classes, but also studying the work, the material, um, studying movies, people that you want to work with, directors, actors, and things like that. Um, mm. I have a great manager and a great agency that I work with, and we they are so awesome, and I'm grateful for them because I get to communicate with them on basically every day if need be mm. to say hey guys this is what i'm feeling i feel like you know yeah. this is what i kind of want to do what do you guys think and then they send in a pitch or you know yeah. see if there's yeah. any breakdowns for that character or for that role and we go from there mm -hmm. interesting okay and yeah. what's the do actresses and actors themselves collaborate like do you guys do you feel like you have support amongst people who are i guess technically your competition <laughs> um, for sure, I definitely feel that there is a, once you get into this, this world of acting, there is a community that you kind of mm -hmm. grow up with. I will say when I first started acting, there was a group of us that, you know, we were all starting together and now we're all rising together yes. in a sense. And so it's like, yeah, we collaborate, we talk about it, we grow from there, share mm -hmm. ideas. And those are the people who keep telling me I should write my own material. They're like, you just, just write something, right, right, right. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to get into it one day. <laughs> Do it. But yeah, you just, you have to be fearless. And you never know unless you try, right? And I think That's that so if you true. look at kind of some, some, of, some of the success that has happened, like what if Ryan Coogler didn't do Black Panther? right? Like, where would we be as a society? Where would Black people be, right? So yes. you've got to just, like, just do it. Look at Ava uh, Dur Durinet, right? Like, yes. she didn't start directing since she was 33, right? Like, she lived a whole lifetime before <laughs> she was able to do this. So if you have it within you, it's important to just release that because, you know, the world is probably going to be a better place because of it. That's so just true. do it. Thank you. I appreciate awesome. that. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, when it comes to kind of advice, things to avoid, what type of tips do you have for people watching on the live, watching on the replay? They want to do this. They're like, oh, my God, you're so successful. I want to be successful. What, 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 what are your keys for success? Number one, be patient. It does not mm. happen overnight. It will not happen mm. overnight. It literally takes 10 years to be an overnight success. It took my brother eight years before he booked like his role in Barbershop, and now he's on uh, mm. Snowfall on FX, the John Singleton project. It took wow. him eight years to get to that point to be a series regular. So number one, be patient. Number two, do your research. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. don't rely on people to like provide you that. You have to study yourself. Like, 
acting is beautiful to study your craft, but study the business side of acting because not everybody's mm. gonna, you know, tell you, oh, this is what you gotta do and this is what you don't do. So it's like, you yeah. know about that. Um, and have mm. fun. Make sure you love it. If you love it, then it's gonna be fine. Awesome. Okay. Interesting. And so, uh, what I, I don't know if, uh, you, uh, you mentioned kind of standing your ground as well. What are some of the things that you could share when it comes to like being a strong negotiator saying no, even if the role is good, is it right for you? Like, how do you work through that? It took me a long time to like, understand that I could say no. Um, I felt mm -hmm. at the very beginning, I felt like I had to say yes to it because I didn't want to miss out on an opportunity. But as I got to understand yeah. myself as an actor and to know my limits, like every actor has their limits and that's what you need to learn and yeah. know during that process is saying, okay, mm -hmm. what can I do? What can I, what won't I do in terms of like comfortability? Mm -hmm. So once I figured that out, I was able to say, this is a beautiful role and whoever gets it is going to kill it and it's going to take them to the next level, but it's not right for me. So I have to say no. Mm. And it's like, because I want to do the, the, the character justice and I don't want to do it just yeah. for the sake of like, oh, this is going to be good for my career. I'm like, but I yeah. have to make sure I portray it the right way so it can be last longing in such a space. Yes. So um, Absolutely. yeah, just know your limits and understand that. And to know that it's okay. It's okay. Mm. Every actor, every well-known actor has their thing that they do or they have their style that they go for and they love it mm. and they're successful in it. That's why they're successful because they know. So just figure yeah. that out and go for it. So being authentic is key and, and, and learning, I guess. And, and what's interesting about that that you say is that sometimes you don't know everything, right, about yourself. Like, you have to go through something, and then you're like, JK, I don't really like this. Yes. Like, you know, and so it's interesting. You have to kind of be experimental, but then take have time of reflection and say, yes. was this really something I would do in the future? What would I change about this? And then kind of crafting that, like, inner kind of, you know, constitution, essentially, of, like, what's for me, what's not for me, what do I need to do? And so that leads me to my next question of how does like media and social media play a role with you as you build your brand and your business? Social media plays a big part. And <laughs> a big part in a lot of different mm -hmm. components. I'm just seeing it as a, in society in general, like not even just from the entertainment standpoint, but for anybody, it's a great business tool to like use this platform to mm -hmm. like take yourself to the next level of what you want to stand for. Let it be your voice in a sense. Um, it does mm -hmm. play a big part, you know, numbers do when it comes to the industry at times. So, but I have a hard time with posting. So <laughs> it's like, you just have to find what you love when it comes to posting and just think of it as more of a business thing and not such personal. And then I think mm. that can kind of help you get through that whole process and idea. Because we get caught up on, like, the fake stuff on social media, like these glorified yeah. ideas. And it's like, because yeah. it's good content. And it's like, at the end of the day, we have to understand that it's a business tool. It's not real life. Mm, mm -hmm, absolutely. Now, it's interesting. You mentioned you have a hard time posting. Is it that you feel like you're not posting enough or what to post? Because, th you know, that might be relevant to different people watching. For me, it's more so post the actual posting. Like, I know what I can post. I have a lot of good content to post. It's just that the idea of like, oh, it's time to post. I'm looking at my time and saying, oh, this is when most of my people are on Instagram. Let me post now. <laughs> and, it's like, <laughs> and it's like that part right there. It's like, oh, I passed the time. It's too late. I got to wait till tomorrow. It's oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that part. And then I give up. Then it'll be like months. And then oh. everyone's like, where did you go? I'm like, yo, I just, I'm just living life. Like I'm in my life right now. So I'm yeah. just like, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yes, there are ideal times for your audience, but Yay! you shouldn't feel like you can't, that you can't post. Why? Because the world is happening 24-7. So even if you needed to post at 1 p.m., guess what? The world will still be here at 2 p.m., <laughs> at 3 p.m., at 7 p.m., you know? Yeah, so just keep true. posting because 
you never know because again right like you will capture people in japan at this time you'll capture you know so it's 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 a global think of it as a global family and so yeah. maybe like your hood your local hood didn't see you but like you reached far right and you're like oh okay what up china like how you doing like you know so, right, that's very very true so just think think global and then just 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 post just do it uh so uh what was i <laughs> My next question would be, uh, so we're having you on the series, Sisters on Fire IRL, because it started actually as a play about 10 years ago, it started by Marsha McNair and Anissa Moore, and they wanted to share the African woman's wow. experience in America, which, as you know, can be very challenging, <laughs> to say the least. Yes. So, uh, you know, if you, if you have to define the word sister on fire, sisters on fire, what does that mean to you? confidence power mm. stability um yes definitely strength and just a, mm -hmm. a clear sense of uh, so many different things like comes to my mind as, as when you said that and just um yes. purpose for sure purpose i love that yeah okay and in your life either personal or professional who were sisters on fire for you my mom my grandmother Aww. Yeah, my mom, she taught mm -hmm. me how to be a leader. That's one thing she instilled mm. in her kids. She was like, you better not follow anybody. She was mm. like, you who be your own leader. She was like, I don't care. And I yes. was bullied a lot when I was in school, so I was always to myself. And even with wow. that, she said, be your own leader. Don't worry mm. about the pressures of that. Just stay to yourself. And so that taught, that really prepared me for this industry. So I mm. didn't really care to be liked by anybody I just knew I needed to do yeah. what I needed to do to be get my respect to respect Absolutely. others and all that stuff mm -hmm. but yeah mm. you were bullied what were you bull bullied for uh well I struggled with school uh so um it was a lot I was taken out of classes to get extra help so I was bullied about that then I was bullied um, oh wow yeah I was it was really about education mm. purposes and reading comprehension and all that stuff I struggle with and um mm. oh my hair how I looked really yeah, yeah it was like every right oh. until high school is when it stopped but I would come home crying mm. every day like I had to deal with bullying but also I had to deal with the fact that I struggled understanding what I was the work that I was trying to do like I was wow. trying to pass my classes and it was like, I would come home crying and my mom staying up with me till like one o'clock in the morning to help me pass the spelling test. Like it was tough. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. That's crazy. Well, first of all, you know, you're absolutely stunning. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, all right, see you later. Mm okay. <laughs> right. And then <laughs> that's for the birds. I don't know. That's crazy. And then secondly, you know, listen, our brains work differently. And, and that's what I really, I really hope, you know, five to 10 years when we're hopefully still chatting with each other that we can say, wow, look how much progress education has come because not every brain works the same. Exactly. And school needs to be catered to the child, yes. not the child fit into some educational system. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's ass backwards. Exactly. You know, you they should have worked the way to get it for you because everyone thinks differently. And so many successful people in this world are dyslexic or have anxiety or, you know, like have all different, they're, they're, we just all have our own ways of behaving. So, yes. you know, but that's, that's great content. I don't know if you talk about that, but I know a lot of people could benefit from I know it's I know that's unner like ner unnerving sharing that and it's Actually, very it's raw but anything that I can anything that I've experienced in my life that can help somebody I'm willing to share yeah I have nothing to like hide or to shy awesome. away from it took me a while to get over that I will say acting helped me get over my shyness because I was very shy because of the bullying but now that I've had to you know just wow. be out there with acting um yeah. I'm I'm almost like ready to share that now, like to help people find, you know, mm. themselves. Yeah. You should. You absolutely, because so many of these children out here are like killing themselves, right? It's gotten worse yes. really with bullying. I think, I think October is anti-bullying month as well. So yeah, like if you do, make sure you tag us so we can support you in sharing that and helping other people come to terms with like, listen, you've got to love, you only have one 
life and you have one body. <laughs> You've got to love you in this lifetime now, yes. <laughs> not yes. later. You only have today, right? We have, Absolutely. we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised next week. So oh. let's, you know, just like really love each other and love ourselves right now. But it's, it's a work in, work in progress, work in thing. Is. So I guess, uh, you know, how are you? Are you driving safely? Are you cool? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Because I'm like, you're like still moving. It's awesome. I know, it's like... <laughs> you know, the thing is, is like I live in Atlanta, and so everything is so far apart from each other. So I'm just like, well, okay. I struggle. Oh wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd love also before we, you know, uh, end our chat for you to talk a little bit about being an artist. What's that like? What's the type of art that you produce? And uh, like, what are upcoming? either art or acting announcements that you have that you'd like to share. Okay, so for uh, painting is geometric abstraction art. Uh, it's very linear mm -hmm. line designs with a little abstract in there. Um, I've been cool. doing that since I was in high school. I was in AP art classes for art. Um, nice. I love it. It's my first love. It's when I'm, mm. I feel like I'm the most free, to be honest, which is mm. kind of interesting. Um, my yeah. work is very, like, detailed and so you can tell the type of person that I am through my artwork yeah <laughs> I'm very like clean cut to the point make sure you see everything and cool. that is, you know understandable and things like that um yeah. I just finished my series called connected but divided and that took me mm. two years to complete and I'm finally done I'm excited wow. about that and um so that's on my website at raquelljohn.com. You can check that out. Perfect. And with acting, um, just Napoli Ever After that came out on Netflix back in September. So that's out. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. And how was that working, you know, with uh, Sinai? Like, I love her. Oh, love her. It was so awesome. Like, just every set that mm -hmm. I go to, I love it because, it's like, everyone operates differently. And so I get to learn something new about somebody and their process. Like, I'm yes. really intrigued by the process of human beings and how each and every one of us has a different way of how we see things and how our perspective yes. is. So just to be yes. in that realm and that environment of the director, the producer, and the other actors, it was just very eye-opening and amazing. And it was just, like, made me happy to just watch everybody. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have the book. I have, you, have you read the book yet or no? No, I haven't, but I need to... Like, I'm yes, a yes. now, but it takes me forever sometimes because I, I go in between. <laughs> yeah. Try audiobooks. Audiobooks, I hear for some people, it's, like, easier, you know, and then you can listen to it in the car and you're like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm going to have to try that for sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Raquel. You are a sister on fire. You're amazing. Uh, do you have any last minute words of advice for anyone watching on the live or on the replay? They want to be an actress. They want to be an artist. They just, they want to create and either they're struggling with it or they're not figuring out what they, what to do, what's next step. What would you say to them? I would just say continue to be true to yourself. As long as you're true to you, everything will fall into place. There's always going to be ups yes. and downs in terms of, like, getting work or not having work. Like, you're you're going yes. to run into those moments. It's not always a high road. So just having mm -hmm. a, a strong sense of self will help you get through those moments. And just constantly Absolutely. create because you never know when your opportunity is going to strike. So you always want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So always have your content ready, your paperwork done, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And just be ready for those opportunities. Like so many times I've asked for certain things, but in reality I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared for it. Mm. So mm. I've been preparing myself for my opportunity. So just prepare yourself yes. for your opportunity and be purposely you. I love that. You're amazing. Yes, guys. Right. It's not just about saying yes, but it's about being ready for that. Yes. That's incredible advice and something that we all can can take and really think about no matter what industry you're in. Say yes. But what happens if the person says yes? What can you what what's next? Right. So right. get ready. Stay ready. And uh, and keep and keep affirming what you want in this world and stay positive. That's the only thing I would add to people. Just we as people, no matter what's going on, 
always know that you can see through things, right? That we can yes. get past it because there's a lot happening in our world. There's a lot happening in our politics. There's a lot happening in our community. We've got to stay grounded with positivity and faith that like you can move forward. So Absolutely. thank you. Thank you, thank you, you so much. Me. Absolutely. You are a sister on fire. I can't wait to share this everywhere. Please guys support Raquel. Go to her website. I have it in the comment section so we can check out your website, check out your art. You have stuff available to buy? Do you, um, yeah? Actually not yet, but I will okay. soon. That's something that I'm working on, preparing myself cool. for that opportunity. <laughs> so I'm working yes. on, by the end of this year, I should have something. I'm working on new pieces now, so I'm hoping to sell Love those. it. Yeah. Yeah, so listen, I'm here for you, Sisters on Fire. We're here for you. Let us know, and we're happy to promote, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, have a great weekend. We'll talk to everyone soon, all right? Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.